阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀，阿弥陀，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀。Happy Monday, everyone.、Um, thank you for coming this late to the session.、Um, we'll continue with our treaties on response and retribution speech.、Um, today we'll talk about、uh, part three, as usual. Last week we have、uh, learned about the transgression of killing and first two section of the transgression of the deceitful. So, for the interest of memorize, understanding it easier,、um, easier memories, easier、um, memorization, we just make it, you know, simple title: Trans- treacherous deeds, easily committed by common people, transgression of the common people, transgression of killing, and transgression of deceitful. So, last two weeks, last week we've been learning about desiring art.、Um, you know, what is transgression of deceitful? In Chinese literally, it means Um, road roads,、uh, you know, the、uh, deceitful. I mean, like de- deceptive. People do not know what's in your heart, mind, and you know the the intention that we harbor are not wholesome, are not、uh, in accordance to our the better version of ourselves. If we use the、uh, easily understood way, you know, we could be a better version of ourselves, but we didn't use that. Instead, we resorted to a bit more,、um, how to say. Uh, less wise, more、um, unwise part of ourselves、uh, that result in more sufferings. So, how does that work? You know, what does that mean? And we immediately go into the first section, talking about that kind of mindset, the kind of intention, wishing people to fail、uh, when they are, you know, on their way to be successful or on their way to achieve. Uh, certain um, uh, milestones, instead of wishing them to be,、uh, you know, better and able to help more people, benefit more people, we may be overridden by our jealousy and unable to, you know, keep a rein, keep keep hold a rein on over it, and allowing that to, you know, drive us. So that intention itself is already a transgression. Um, and obviously, with thoughts and intentions, it will if you crystallize it, if you focus a lot on it, it will become actions, speech. So we might gossip,、uh, people might gossip, defame, even though that person did not do anything wrong. You know, using media outlets or something like that,、uh, bribe someone else from the media or something to make、uh, a false accusation so that we can bring them down.、Um, And and some of them might even you know have an effect of preventing people from you know getting support to carry out their good deeds. Maybe they want to support a orphanage, to support a multi faith, multi cultural、uh, organization. You know, a, a, a good stuff that's good for the communities because you know personal、um, maybe rivalries, you know, or perceived. Uh, misunderstandings or jealousies, or you know,、um, one-sided mind、uh, thought. Maybe like it may might threaten my position if this person getting too famous.、Uh, this happens、uh, from ancient times until modern times. It's it's humans' jealousy, one of the woes of humankind.、Um, and the result is you stopping these good projects or good deeds from being carried out that could have. Benefit a lot of people, and we talk about cause and effect. Every action has a reaction. Every co- decision has consequences, whether it's intentional or unintentional. Once it was done, the seed has been sown. It just takes time, right condition to grow. And doing this, obviously, will reap what we sow in future. When we want to be successful, when we want to achieve a certain level of、um, mouse,、uh, you know. Like maybe perform good deeds, maybe have a you know、um, 
a very great ambition to fulfill and people were setting roadblocks against you. Uh, and sometimes you don't even know why. And this is one of the reasons. Also, um, if that person are destined to be successful, I destined as in their merits is good enough, strong enough, like more look no further than the Buddha. He's destined to teach and to spin the Dharma wheel for at least uh, 15,000 15, years. Yeah, for tens of at least 15,000 years in this world. So no matter how much roadblocks people set on his path, like Devadatta is trying to kill him by throwing a rock from the top of the cliff, it will not harm him. For his merit has been accumulated for many lives, countless merits to overcome these hurdles. So all you do is just delaying. Like all we, all the people who commit this transgression did is delaying it. All right, delay the inevitable. For the and and what what did they get in return? A small sense of false sense of achievements, and followed by countless endless um, uh, kalpas eras of sufferings in lower three realms, preferably in the lowest of the lowest, the hell realm. Or in the current life, they will suffer from their own deeds as well. It's like spitting to the air and the flame will fall back into your face. Same thing. So same for this one, it's similar motif. Talk about, you know, um, this is more like negligence or doing something risky, dangerous at the expense of people who followed you or people who were around you. Um, basically, negligence, disregard for other people's safety. Uh, disregard for other people's benefit, right? It can be from, you know, physical stuff. Uh, you're doing some physical activities and you're being reckless and and you, how to say, maybe trying to cross the uh, river to show that you are very capable, but this river has a very rushing current and your friend that you brought along, you know, they just want to have fun with you, but you didn't know how to hold yourself back and ended up causing tragedy. Some people drown. So that's a lot of things happening, you know, with kids playing along the creeks and stuff. So knowing, you know, to put a break at the right time is important so that you can protect others and yourself. The next one is the benefits in terms of business, in terms of you know, it's as simple as sharing a plate of fruit or as big as, you know, sharing uh, company shares, you know, big profits. And if we do not have a concept of win-win or concept of trying to, you know, um, be fair in our dealings with others uh, or trying to give others a little bit more, uh, then, you know, that is also another transgression. All right. It's, it's very subtle. That's why it's called it deceitful. You can't see it on the surface immediately, but they might, you know, take a cut from you that, that you're supposed to get 50-50 or supposed to get... Uh, portion, 40 portions and then they cut another 10 from you you only get 30 something like that um, those underhanded tactics just to get that profit and f and if we think cool with our cool head how long can you enjoy this right you can enjoy this for 10 years 20 years give you 30 years and then w what did it cost to enjoy this grant resentment and that resentment does not go away just because that person passed away. It will pass down generations to generations. Eventually, it will become something worse than how it initially started. This is cause and effect. Laying bare naked in front of us, just like that. Sometimes we might not know why you know, this family and that family fight over uh, so ferociously, or some people just you know, like to take advantage of you. Why this person not getting cheated $1,000, but that person getting cheated $1,000? Those are seeming random stuff. It's not random. They all have cause and effect. We just can't see it. Just because we can't see it doesn't mean it's not there. So, going into this section, today's, uh, this week's session, we talk about to, uh, uh, another, you know, deceitful, uh, conduct um, basically it starts from that kind of mindset we'll explore a little bit and hopefully I'll open 
a bit more talk uh, rather than just me um, talking. But I'll give a literal explanation uh, from what it ex translated into and the Chinese itself, and we'll go a little bit deeper from there. So we start with the first half, as you can see in Chinese, yi e, yi hao, yi si fei gong. So the first half, the fraudulently exchange what is worthless for what is valuable. That means, um, you know, as it's quite obvious, you know, like something good, you keep it to yourself, something that's less worthy or a bit broken, you leave it for others. It can, it can be as small as toys, clothing, foods, as big as, you know, maybe um, uh, uh, clothing, not clothing, as big as um, like when when you when you uh, work with other people and you know maybe yeah actually I can't find an example but um, yeah so when we look at these sentences we think about food right like you know pears or the nice delicious fruit especially in this summer we appreciate the good fruit and we like to share it with others that itself it's seemingly innocent but if you know, we're sharing with others. Do we have a tendency to leave the bad one out for others or do we leave it uh, the the less better one, I mean, the, the, the less appealing one to ourselves and leave the good one for others? Right, those are like basic decency, gui level, which is like foundation of the foundation. Basically common decency. Uh, sometimes, you know, we might think, why are we talking about this? This is common decency, but You'll be surprised that, you know, if we do not teach this mindset from very young beginnings, how far is the consequences of this negligence goes to? You know, what happens if uh, it comes to an emergency situation? Uh, you know, you might use your funds to help people or, or your, your savings to help your family or friends. And maybe you are, you know, being... Um, you don't have the concept of giving. You only you, you only know you know money equals to your own enjoyment. And when it comes to a time of need, you cling too hard on this thing that only stay with you for no more than hundred years, at the expense of your soul, basically at the expense of your conscience. So it get, it, it all comes from very humble, small beginning, like fruit. Look at uh, not just. Uh, children, but mostly you can start from children. Like if they, if you give them a plate of pears, and one of them is a little bit, uh, how to say, ripe, too ripe, gets a bit browned, coloured. The other one is fresh. Look at, you know, maybe these siblings or this, or, or these playmates. What is their response? Yeah. And you can, you can see, you know, this decency, common decency, was that thought to them? Some of them has innate ability to understand, you know, it's very decent to give other people better stuff and keep the less good one for ourselves. But most of the time we need to explain this to the children. We need to be an example. And, and this will carry forward in their life. And trust me, it will believe it will benefit them in the very long run. They will have a lot of genuine, authentic friends and stuff like that. It does not mean that we have no boundaries, but it means that we are able to allow you know, ourselves a little less enjoyment so that everyone can enjoy a little bit more. And only then your world is a bit bigger than just your own little cocoon, our own little cocoon, right? Um, clothings in the time of Buddha. The clothings uh, in the Sangha, the Buddha monk uh, community in under Buddha is gotten from the um, leftovers. They do not have brand new clothings, even though the kings and the princes have been you know, donating all the, all the nice piece of clothing to them. They don't use that. They only use the leftover scra scraps from you know, everyday households. And they use that and stitch them together in a in, a, in what resembles a, a rope and they wear it over. So obviously it looks ugly if you just leave it like that. So they drench it, they color it, they dye it in brown color. 
uh, which is the most neutral color, you know, earthy, earthy color, brown orange. And you can see that in uh, nowadays Theravada traditions and stuff, um, they still wear it a lot. So that's that's what we call the um, the, the the rope, the, the standard of getting a clothing. So why do Buddha lead his congregation, his um, sangha, like that? You know, why did he just take? You know, he could have just say something, and then the whole not not whole kingdom, five kingdoms will all you know rushing to send him the clothings, more than enough for his two thousand five hundred students for the rest of their lives. But he didn't do that, right? So something to think about. And the last one before I uh, open up for this part. Why do we take priority for others over ourselves? Or rather, why is it common for us to take priority on ourselves over others? Or is that a difference? So let's, let me break it down. Okay, it sounds like a common sense, right? Like we should take care of ourselves before we take care of others. That's true. But in this case, it means take care of ourselves at the expense of others. Is that a right way to live? Even though you can do that, and there's no one who can stop you. Uh, no, no one can morally, legally stop you. Right? Like, what's wrong? I'm just thinking here myself. I have a very short life. Why can't I just enjoy it? You know, YOLO. Well, it depends on the goal. It depends on what do you want to get out of your life. You know, I can't just say, are oh, you wrong? I can say, this is your choice. But if you want to have a wider path, outlook of your life, larger than life, if I may say so, then we can't just live for ourselves. It's too small. The mental space is too small. It's very restrictive, to be honest. You're only stuck in your own habit of thinking. There's no way you can expand without interacting with others. Those are conditions for you to grow. And to do that, you need to be able to open up and give. Only then you will receive. It. And when you receive, you'll be able to give even more. That's how it works. Even in trade, what was commonly known as the business of greed, you know, the profitability of greed, they also need to learn how to give as well. Obviously, their mindset is not to give. Their mindset is to give so that they can get more. That is something we do not pursue. But they still have to give mechanically. So no matter how you see it, there is no way you can escape from the act of giving. But right now in here, we are talking about the intention when you give. Do you intentionally give so, so that you can get more? Or another goal you have is you give because it's such a joy to do so. Your world is bigger. You share more uh, material comfort with everyone else instead of just yourself. Right? What kind of world would that be? Do it within your powers and a little bit beyond. Push that boundary a little bit. You might see that there's a quite big world out there for us. It might be full of sufferings, but it also is a full of opportunities to turn it into something um, very enriching, very nourishing to your mental self, mental health, to your, you know, to yourself. But this is still stuck in that myself, myself mindset. But this is better. Um, this is a good way to start with. But if you push a little bit further. You know, is it, is it our goal to just survive? Do we just enjoy, you know, get to the top of the whatever we are at, pursuing, get all the good uh, stuff the money could offer, enjoy the top of it, enjoy the sensual pleasure of it, stuff like that, and then just die? Or we do yearn for something better than that, something more substantial than that, or something more say bigger than that that's why we pursue arts that's why we have some mindset larger than life we have the concept of immortality through you know next generation either through your bloodline or through your ideas being passed down to next generation now, that's another goal 
like Venerable Chanda has mentioned a lot of times, even when he was layperson. Making effort will yield results, but it does not necessarily mean good results or the result that we really desired. So we desire happiness, we desire fulfilling life, but if we put the effort into a wrong place, towards a wrong direction, then we will never get to that point. So first thing is the direction. What is your goal? What is your direction? What, what is the, where do you want to put your intention, your energy at? And that depends on what path of life you're at, what stage of life you're at. You know, the basic necessity is fulfilled and then you move up. You want to go to a more spiritual, more mental stimulating. Beyond mental, you go to spiritual one. Those are progressions that are commonly seen in civilizations. When they can't even eat, they can't survive, they can't think about all this artsy stuff. Obviously, they need to focus on surviving, defending against enemy, getting foods, getting supplies. And then when they settle down, they think about arts, think about, you know, enhancing more civilized way of conducting themselves and others. And then beyond that, you know, they don't want to stuck in hedonism. They were stuck in this pleasure, sensual realm, you know, always passively driven by five senses. I, what I like to eat, what I like to see, what I like to hear, what I like to touch, what I like to smell. So they go beyond what I like to think. And then thinking do not fulfill anymore because it's uh, very restrictive. Sometimes it's very messy. So they want to go beyond. We call it spiritual awakening. And that's why people become monks or my, what Buddha is trying to show us, letting go of all this. You know, he has the top of the comfort that the world could offer at his time and he let it go because he wants to go beyond the five senses. So those are not right or wrong. It's just where you're at. And eventually, if you want to go beyond the confines of your current existence, then you need to elevate, you need to give in order to open up. You need to let go in order to go up higher or wider. So this is one way to look at what Master Ching Kung been saying for 60 years of his life. He inherited from his teacher. See through, let go. Kampo Fangxia, Kampo Fangxia, Kampo Fangxia. How much you can see through depends on how much you can let go. How much you let go is depends on how much you can see through. Then this concept of self and others no longer looks so stuck because it becomes what happening is you benefit others, you actually nourishing from benefiting others. Instead of just keeping it to yourself, you only know fruit tastes like fruit. You know, clothing keeps you warm. But when you give your clothing and give your fruit food to others and share your you know knowledge to help to them, you realize that you know eating alone and eating in as a group is different. You know, keeping warm by yourself or keeping warm in a group is different. Knowing so much things, being smart by yourself or making the whole community smarter, kinder, wiser is entirely a different thing. In other hand, in other, in the other hand, yourself is bigger than just this cocoon. So there's no self and others, or there's lesser boundary between self and others. You become more able to merge into other people. And that's where we call compassion. It's, it's very nourishing to your heart. And in the other hand, you will nourish other people because you inspire them. People who have capability, you inspire them and they will do the same because they have power, money, influence, wisdom, intelligence, skills. They will contribute the way they can or even just chopping vegetables in the kitchen. They will use their best technique to do that because they do things beyond just themselves. Now let's strike this point to home. Most obvious example is Mother Teresa, who has contributed to this charity for whole life, sleeping next to the gutter, uh, standing next to uh, poor guys in, in the gutter. You know, hug them and bring them to the care palliative care for those who are going to pass away or, you know, health care and, you know, give them a, a respect worthy of a human, a human respect you know, respect them like a human instead of like a gutter rat, rat they were. 
before they were found. Second thing is Madam Master Ching Kong, who has spent his whole life propagating wisdoms, you know, giving you different perspective, giving you um, a more uh, up to date understand not up to date, a understanding that are more closest to how we see it, using the the science and stuff like that, and also retaining, you know, confidence in our traditional culture, in Chinese, East Asian traditional culture, and focusing on Chinese traditional culture, because it was a very bright civilization and lost its confidence because of negligence. And the whole point of him doing that is just to bring back that sense of um, community and home. So he has spent his 60 years of his life going towards that direction. Of course, as a monk, his job is to propagate Dharma and he has been doing that until the very last day of his life. And I suspect that he's still doing that beyond that. I think his itinerary will only grow in Pure Land, not less. So do you, so do I, if we actually get there. Because our capability will increase exponentially. The last one is Desmond Dawes. I think you guys, uh, if you guys heard of Hexel Ridge, it's a beautiful story. The movie could not do it justice. It's a beautiful movie, but it couldn't do the real man justice. That guy is literally embodiment of selflessness. He, you know, object to killing. However, he served his nation at the time of needs, joined the war against the Japanese in the 1940s. And all he did is saving lives. Doesn't matter where they are. They save Japanese life, Americans' life, and even at the expense of his arm, expense of his, I think, left shoulder, he got injured. He got, you know, bullet punching through his bodies, part of his bodies, because it's a better view. He only yelled, repeat this mantra, Lord, give me one more. Help me to get one more. One more of what? One more life to save. So that's all he think about. This is a real quote, not the movie quote. That's a quote from his own biographies. And, you know, this kind of extraordinary feat, although it's not common, well, that's what makes it extraordinary, it's inspiring. So those are the examples of people who has their alignment bigger than just eat, sleep, have fun, which is good, but not enough. They go beyond. They understand that, you know, they need to let go of their comfort in order to provide comfort for all. And in the end of the day, they receive the highest form of comfort. You might call it religious. But how does something like that can touch thousands of people's of heart? Right. We, if we use it as religious, we can. Or if we use a, a term we're more familiar with, just being a human, or rather just being a very, very decent person. You also you can use that. You know. That's the reason why it lasted thousands of years, because there are people like this being the main pillar, despite a lot of, you know, not so glamorous sight. There are also people, good people like this, that holds the core of the organization, the soul, the spirit of the founder. And these people, if they stop existed in this world, that's the end of our humanities. Because there's no flag symbol that's, that inspire us to be a better version of ourselves. That's how it came to be, no matter how we label it. So now I have um, given a, a most 30 minute talk. Uh, we have 50 minutes left. Before I move on to the next half of the quote, which I will, wouldn't be able to expand as much as this one, the first half, um, could you share what, like, anything else you have heard, you know, from stories, from your friends? It can be small things, can be big things, you know, like the, the positive examples of living more than just for yourself. You, know? you can have yourself, but you can also invite other people in your world. I'm not saying that everyone has to be Desmond Dawes or immediately become Master Ching Kong or Madrisa, but any positive example? 
in your life or maybe your own experience like you open up a little bit you give a little bit and you realize that it's actually more liberating or the negative example people will only take care of themselves in the end they couldn't find any help when they really need it or something like that that's right like basically you need to you, you need to like how to say step it's like playing a character like if we just look at things from our perspective it's only one character and it will be very stagnant but if you play from other people's perspective the world is different and and you need to like combine two to two together like okay what i need what they need meet it meet it the halfway or you know what i'm doing right now is to do this i'm actually trying to help you so i need to know what you actually need uh, to, to, to provide that help yeah thank you auntie thank you it takes a, a, a big heart and also um skills as well you know skillfulness uh, in in our case we are dharma and if we actually understand dharma we actually practice it with patience and you know a lot of failures but a lot of um, growth as well and from there we learn understand taste the dharma what buddha has taught us he has been through this he told us about this and we put it to test and we actually experience what he used to experience you know when he's trying to benefit people he got sp spit in the face or when he's trying to do good stuff and he forgot he didn't do it as skillfully as you you would or as, as skillful as he would later because you know he only think about helping but he didn't think about what to help how to help what that person need he just help like you know i just give him food without thinking about you know maybe they have peanut allergies or you know do they have the um inter intolerance like intolerance you need to be extra patient and, and, and caring doesn't matter that person's reaction or not you have to learn to be you know not to be affected by it. you need to be affected but also not to be drawn in that's that's a skill guys that's where all these practice come in it's a very subtle and fine art it's it's um it's learning how to drive yourself open to us others while still able to maintain uh control maintain awareness you know what's what is actually going on is this going to help them if it's not then i retreat find a better person or find a better way so this takes a lot of experience it's best by learning just doing it learning from experienced people stand next to them and learn from them and you of course if your own family it's even more straightforward all right i'll wrap up here because the next half is not much to talk about it's pretty pretty official um it's just talk about briberies and you know those things that are you gotten um because we have four minutes thank you auntie thank you uh thank you auntie Yenzi, thank you alex for sharing uh i'm just gonna you know quickly sum up the last one it just sacrifice public benefit in order to reap personal profit or to forward private agendas uh, those are common sense in public service applicable to there it can be uh, you know in business as well in your own job as well you know with colleagues and stuff like that um, also there are many ways to procure benefits and you know there are many forms of benefits you know monetary benefits perks more influence more uh, having more say in the organization more power um uh how to say easier access to a stuff either of this benefit if they are the principles if this was obtained in an ill-gotten way whether people send it up to you on a silver platter and asking you could you do something for me if i give you this you know it's pretty obvious we have a strict law against that but um you know some some of them are very gray you can't see it um for example like you have a deal you know from a client you're trying to deliver a, a good service say producing uh, paper or producing books uh, and if the if the client is asking you to produce book on a grade five 
say grid 10 is the best, grid 5 paper, you're trying to cut costs, you use grid 2, grid 3, imitate it like a good product. Those profit margins that you resulted from you cutting the cost without customer knowing it is ill-gotten gain. You're stealing from them. And the karma is resulting in how long your benefit, like how long does the harm cost to them, you know, and how big is the harm cost. If you benefit at the expense of others' benefit, then you have to pay with interest on those benefits you stole from others. Worst case is when the client asking you to print Buddhist book or Bibles or anything that is benefiting people for free as well, especially, and you're trying to cut the cost, resulting in low lower lifespan of the book. Reducing the lifespan of the book means reducing, say, if it was supposed to last 500 years or 300 years using the top quality paper, and you use the normal, you know, brochure level, which is for wide distribution, not meant to last long, to print it and then you skimp that money out of them. That benefit, that is even worse because you're robbing people 50 years later or maybe 500 years later from the opportunity to get in contact with good teachings that will benefit them their life. So the result is you need to repay all that many, many lifetimes. That's a very, that's a, there's an outlook of the kind of life. So this little profit margin is not worth it. And we understand there is no benefit from this, doing this, then we would not do it, no matter how lucrative it is, because we know reward will come, no matter, uh, no, like reward will come only when I'm actually earnestly doing my part. It might seem unfair at the first place, Maybe because you didn't, the condition is not right, but it will come in the right place, in the right time. We need to be patient. If you're not being patient, the result is we're going to incur even more penalty, more sufferings. So it's it's a it's it's a waiting game. It's also the understanding of dharma, understanding of cause and effect. Eventually, let go of understanding, let go of the desire to pursue profit too much, profit. Because those things can only be useful until you live in comfortably. Anything beyond that is just extravagance, empty desires. You know, beyond survival, beyond basic comfortable comfortable lives living standard, you need spiritual teaching. You need more how to say mental enhancement rather than those short term benefits. Okay, I'll sum it up here. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, it's only, you know, uh, when we do this, well, more often than we, we, we kind of reboot our brain with this kind of teaching. We know that. We know this teaching, but if we bring it down to, you know, step-by-step, step, layer it, and more reasonable, you know, we, we, we lay out the reasons, we lay out the case, the good examples, if we can find it and share your own, your own examples, experience, only then we can uh, be more confident in pursuing the path, the, the path that will bring us ultimate happiness, bring us better uh, state of life. Thank you very much. Uh, that's it. Because you can see there's a lot more, but I would like to dedicate our merit. Before that, let's chant our meter for 10 times and then we'll dedicate merits and we'll end it there. A me to for 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 may the merits and virtue adorn the buddha's pure land repay the four kinds of kindness above 
and relieve the sufferings of those in the tree paths below. May those who see and hear of this all bring forth the heart of understanding and compassion and live the teachings for the rest of this life. Then be born together in the land of ultimate bliss. Amitabha.